Hello and thank you for purchasing my Unreal Engine 5 Quest system. In today's video I'm going to walk you through connecting my Unreal Engine 5 Quest system to my inventory and item system. That way we can use our items as quest rewards. Before you continue, I recommend watching my quick setup guide video. It will cover all the basics of integrating and setting up the system. We're going to be moving a bit quicker through those topics in this video. I also have another video which will walk you through step by step making a quest. And I'll leave a link to both in the description. Okay, let's dive in. To start this off, I'm going to create a new copy of our inventory and item system from the Epic Launcher. This is going to be our base project. Then I'm going to add my quest system to it. Next, open up our item system player controller and add the AC underscore quest underscore player controller component to it. Go ahead and press play, then press L to make sure the quest log opens up. I'm going to tweak the directional light just a little bit, then I'm going to add a couple actors into our level. I'm going to use a few static meshes and a copy of our quest player character, which is just an unedited copy of the third person BP. And we're going to use all these to test our quest. Open the quest data table located in the blueprints variables data tables folder. Copy the start at actor tag and attach it to your first actor in your level. Go ahead and repeat this step for the complete at actor tag. I'm going to attach it to this character. Let's hook up our objective next. Head on back to the data table and expand the objective section of our quest. Our first two objectives share the same tag, so go ahead and copy the tag and then attach it to your actor in your world. I'm going to attach it to this other sphere over here. Next we need to update the level name so it matches our current level. Let's go ahead and try it out real quick. The basic functionality of the quest should now work and you should be able to complete it. Let's also go ahead and drop a copy of our reset button into the level because we're going to have to reset this quest a few times during our testing. One thing you might have noticed when you open the quest window and you have your inventory open, everything works fine, but as soon as you close the quest window, you lose your mouse, which you still kind of need for the inventory. We can get it back by closing and reopening the inventory. And the reason this happens is because the two systems work independently of each other, so they're basically fighting over the variable. But let's go ahead and fix this. Go ahead and open up the UI for the item system located at the base of the UI's folder. And then go to the event graph and look for this giant or statement. Well, we need to basically duplicate what this is doing here. So let's turn this into a function. Select the nodes, then right click and select collapse the function. Give it a name like has open windows. And make sure it's a pure function. Now, as is, this is not going to account for our actual inventory windows. This is only going to account for all the extra windows. So we're going to need to add some logic to this to make it work for our needs. We also want to maintain how it was working before. And to do this, we're going to add a Boolean to our input. That way we can tell this function when we want to exclude the inventory. And we're going to set the default to true. Now we have to handle the UI inventory reference a little differently because it's always going to have a value. So we can't just use this, this is valid node. So go ahead and drop a reference to your UI inventory. Then from it, pull off and get visibility. And then we want to see if this value is equal to visible. And if it is, that means the window is open. So since we're only going to use this in certain situations, we're not going to just plug it right into this big OR statement. Instead, we're going to make another OR statement and then feed it in through a select based on the value of our exclude inventory variable. For the index of our select, we're going to use our exclude inventory input. And then just feed the small OR into the false and the big OR into the true. I'm going to go ahead and tidy up my graph real quick. That way it's easier to read in the future. Next, open up the UI quest HUD at the root of the quest system UIs folder. Then go to the event graph. Navigate to the mouse toggle section. The mouse off event is what we're going to tie our logic into. Let's go ahead and give ourselves some more room to work with. Now we need to call that function that we just made. And to do that, we need to get our player controller, then use the get controller message. And then from the controller pin, drag off and select get UI item system. And then from that pin, drag off and select has open windows. And then go ahead and plug that into a branch. And for this instance, let's also make sure we uncheck exclude inventory. And if this is true, we want to run this decrementing function. And this variable is how we keep track of how many windows are using the mouse for the quest system. Then just run the false into the original logic. Now 
And now we get the expected result with our mouse cursor. And the next issue I want to resolve is how the item system is trying to interact at the same time our quest system is interacting. This is because both have key bindings attached to the E key. And to fix this, we just need to combine our logic into one instead of running both. Go ahead and open the player controller for the item system and navigate to the section right here where it's showing the interact nearby. And this is where we need to add in our extra logic. And the logic we need to add is inside of our player controller component for our quest system. Go to the key bindings graph and then right here, this E button, interact nearby. This is the function that we need to add to our current player controller for the item system. Head on back to the player controller and drag out a reference to your quest player controller component and then run the function interact nearby. And the output on this function is a boolean that'll let us know if the quest system actually handled the interaction. Plug that into a branch. That way if it is false, then the quest system can go ahead and try its logic. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a few comments that way I can remember what this is for in the future. And we should also do one at the other end on the mouse toggle. Now, if you were to play right now and run up and try to accept the quest, you'd see that it accepts automatically. And that's because we're still firing off the original event. So we need to go back into our player controller component and unbind that. So head back to the AC underscore quest underscore player controller component in the key bindings graph and just delete that E binding that we had since we have it tied into our player controller on the item system. There we go, all better. Now for the fun stuff, head on back over to your quest player state component and expand the quest reward section. First function we're going to edit is this get item info one. And for our item system where we're storing the information is in the instance. So go ahead and get get game instance and then from that pin drag off and select get item from db. For the item row name we're just going to put in our item id from the input of this function. From our get item db, we can break off and get the item name and the item icon. Hook everything up and make it look pretty. Press play and try it out. The quest reward should now show the proper names of the proper icons. Let's go back to the data table for the quest and change the blue sphere reward to a red sphere reward, just so we can make sure everything's working properly. Let's go ahead and press play and try it again. And there we have it. We have our red spheres as a reward now. Next, we're going to edit the give quest reward item function. Now for this, we need to get our player controller and then run the get player controller message. And then from that pin, we're going to pull off and do an add to inventory on the AC inventory component. Then let's go ahead and hook our inputs into it to hook it up to the return. And that's that one. Let's try it out and make sure we get our quest reward. Yep, that's what we're looking for. Next, we're going to hook up the quest objective for giving items to an actor. And we can use our flowers underscore lily quest to use as an example for this objective. Let's just change the map to the map we're currently in and then take our tag and attach it to our actor. Right here in the objective data is where we determine what items we want to turn in. And let's use the same NPC that we're using for the quest turn in on the first quest. I'm just going to drag it over here and then go ahead and add the tag to it for our quest. Go ahead and press play and you should see the repeatable quest indicator. You see you get the error message that says we don't have the items. Head on over to the Blueprints Quest Objectives folder and open up the Actor component inside of the Inventory folder, AC underscore Quest Objective Inventory. And then open up the Get Inventory Item Quantity function and delete the Quantity Tester variable. For this, we're also going to need a reference to our Inventory component on our Player Controller, so I'm just going to copy these from our last function and paste them in over here. Then from the AC inventory component, we're going to do the get inventory quantity function. And go ahead and hook it up. For the get item row name, we're going to use the get item row name from our input. And make it pretty. And this one is done. Now we got to work on the part that actually takes the inventory from the player. 
this function that we just did is just to check the quantity. And this is ran before we take the inventory, just as a validation step. Go ahead and switch to the take inventory function and clear out right where I have the comment for you. We're going to need our AC inventory component reference again for this one. So I'm just going to copy and paste it over here as well. And then for this one, we're just going to remove inventory. And the item row name is the value coming out of our for each loop. And the value coming out of the find is our quantity. Go ahead and hook everything up and try it out. Well, I guess we're going to need to get the items first. And we can get the items off the trader. We just need to have golden goose eggs. So let's run over and pick up these loot box extremes because they'll give us a bunch of goose eggs. And then we'll go back to the trader and get what we need. All right, let's test this out. Head back to the NPC and then hand over the requested items. And the quest is completed. Head on into the quest events folder and open up BP quest events give quest items blueprint. Let's go ahead and get a reference to our controller and then from it get a reference to our AC inventory component. And then let's save this reference into a variable. I'm going to throw a sequence in here just to keep it clean. And now from our for loop, we can go ahead and run the add inventory fit on our AC inventory component reference. And the value coming out of our for each loop is the item row name, and the value coming out of our find is our item quantity. Let's go ahead and head back to our data table and add this to an on state change quest event for our first quest. Select the first quest, and then where it says on state change, click the add button. Go ahead and select in progress for the state change to. And then for the handler, select our give quest items BP. Then for the quest state data, you just want to feed the list of items you want to give them as the key for the item row name, and then the quantity is the value. And let's try it out. And there you can see we got our items. One small issue you might have noticed is when the quest window is open and the inventory window is open, and then you close the quest window, you still have the mouse, but you can't move the character until you close the inventory. So to fix this, let's go into our quest HUD, and then we just need to copy this movement on node and attach it to the decrementing function that's running off the true branch. And then this should make it so we can be able to move our character again. Yep, that looks good. Now you might have noticed both these indicators stacking on top of each other, and you may like that, but if you don't, there's a way to make it so you can have just the one with the highest priority showing. And to do that, we have to add a component to our actor. The AC underscore quest underscore actor component. And then from the quest helper indicator section, go ahead and select priority for the multiple indicator handler. And as you can see, we just have the one indicator now. And we can still access both quests. So when we complete this quest, now we see this one is the priority one. Very simple, but it's up to you if you want to use it or not. There we go. Inventory and item system combined with the quest system. If you have any questions about either of these blueprint systems, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for your purchase and good luck with your game. And make it pretty.